because now it's time for our last speaker of the day. Please welcome Helian. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Helian Karlström from E.ON. Hello. Uh, Hello. Fantastic to hear about the flexibility. That Isn't was my it? old job. They have I really started over there. Yeah. <laughs> so I will talk about uh, Ectogrid and how we are uh, now deploying our innovation based on heat pumps and uh, district heating knowledge within Europe. And we call it the fifth generation district heating and district cooling. And looking into this map, I think several of you have seen this before probably. It's really a good illustration, I think, myself, of where people mainly live in Europe and where energy is being used for heating. We are not even on the map in Stockholm. No, sorry for that. <laughs> it's actually not me. It's, it's okay. The, yeah. It's and okay. Uh, we are on the outskirts. Of <laughs> yeah, yeah. And also, uh, considering in many of these places, uh, a lot of excess heat is also being created at the same time. And so what we are doing uh, we are when we talk about heat pumps is actually that we are also talking about cooling machines. So let's come back to that. Uh, and here, I, w I want to show you this one because I really like I work a lot in the Netherlands uh, and um, I really like it, except uh, I also like a fried uh, 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 French fries with uh, mayonnaise and uh, everything. But what I find very interesting in this market is um, there is, a, uh, as I said before, is a lot of gas today in the Netherlands. I think 95% about the population might have gas, but they have really decided to move away from gas super fast. Because we all know Netherlands is, uh, they is struggle a bit with uh, the climate change and being too low. Mm. Uh, and what's, what's happening here is that we don't have an electricity grid big enough to actually support all, uh, all these heat pumps. And this, this is... Uh, uh, fast speed development uh, where we will not have the time to uh, uh, reinforce the grid before we are deploying these heat pumps. At the same time, I find this market very, very interesting because the perception of how things should be done and the decision powers of individuals. Mm. So I think we shall come back to that one. Uh, but here, also coming back to the Netherlands, what uh, pretty much all new built in, uh, in uh, countries like the, uh, the Netherlands, but also new built in the in UK, uh, Italy and so on, all new builds have cooling for residentials as well. And uh, all uh, commercial buildings today, also in Sweden, have cooling needs. Mm. At the same time, we have a vast amount of data center so, and a lot of the power today, electricity, is going into data centers in our major uh, cities in Europe. And all these data centers are creating vast amount of waste heat. Uh, so, and the temperature might be about 30, 40 uh, degrees, maybe 25, but this is not being used today. We are quite good, especially I would say in Sweden, since we're so good, uh, to reuse uh, uh, excess energy from industries and so on, uh, but not from these waste heat uh, cooling processes. And also, coming back to why we think this is uh, it's important to talk about it, here it's the energy demand, uh, how it's dropping uh, for new build. Here we have to consider to build uh, traditional district heating based on combustion uh, to new built properties that have very, very low demands. You can question that a bit. Also, even existing buildings are going into uh, a phase of retrofit and the demands are, are decreasing. And uh, at the same time, uh, the demand, temperature demand for the building, especially for new built, is decreasing. And even if it's not retrofitted, even if it's not rebuilt, you can always question, I do actually need 100 de degrees or above to, to get 21 degrees indoors. It doesn't make sense, does it? 
and we have very good control measurements today. So what we have been doing is that we have been working for several years uh, quite hard on developing a system that cr can provide both heating and cooling. So this is what we call the fifth generation district heating grid, and I will explain how this works. Uh, so here, super animated here, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a new way of looking into heating and cooling, because at the same time as many buildings do use uh, a cooling machine to remove uh, the excess energy, they add uh, domestic hot water and others by uh, using fossil gas. And while one neighbor has struggled to remove the excess energy, the other neighbor is using, is using gas to add energy. And in cities, it's obviously not doable to have this. So we have been working hard on developing this solution that we call Ectogrid. And it's based on that you put two pipes in the ground. One is warmer, one is colder. You can shift the temperature of these, uh, of these pipes. You can have, for instance, to, to put the head into uh, the right thinking on it. One pipe could be, for instance, 5 degrees, the other could be 15. It could also be that the lower temperature could be 10 and the other one 40. So you can split this. You can decide what temperature you want in your grid. And the way to do this is to make this grid bidirectional and to make all the substations uh, or heat pumps that are being placed within the buildings, uh, we, we can control and steer them. So by using heat pumps instead of traditional heat exchangers only, we do control the temperature we are putting back to the grid. So if you, if you take up energy in one building, you balance it within the building, the remaining part is going back to the grid. So if you have a cooling need, the additional energy that, because cooling is something, is removing energy, that energy is being put back onto the grid. The neighbor might want to use the energy and they take from the warm energy, then they can have a temperature of maybe 30 degrees instead of uh, air sourced or a borehole. So they take the 30 degrees and they adjust it to the temperature that building do need. On the other side of, uh, of that machine, cool water is going to go back and the one in need of cooling will take the cool water and their uh, cooling machine or shiller, which is the same machine as the heat pump, will put it back. So happy to discuss this principle a little bit more with the hydraulic uh, <laughs> point of view, but the uh, principle, as I will show you, is that you need to have uh, the machines distributed, but you connect them. And we use the same machines for heating and cooling. So we don't put additional machines that it looks like here. And uh, the, the pumping is distributed. And to balance this, of course, in the wintertime, we will need to add additional energy into the system. This, uh, this is a little bit tricky, and we use whatever is available. Uh, in some places, uh, we are using uh, energy, in other, waste heat, and so on. But actually, several of these grids, uh, the dimension <coughs> is being dimensioned on the, uh, uh, that we need to get rid of energy. Because in many countries, the cooling demands are higher than the heating demands. So, uh, here, we are. N this started in, in the medical village in Lund. I think several of you have visited visited this site and it's still a de development place for this uh, but we are now deploying this uh, in several countries across Europe mm -hmm. and uh, it takes of course several years to develop these projects they're uh, rather big and uh, I will show you here is Medicom Village everybody who's interested is, is, uh, is, uh, is welcome and uh, we get, uh, by balancing this, we have managed to lower the temp uh, uh, overall energy consumption in Medicom Village by 65% because we move the excess energy from the cooling into the heating. All we do is adjusting it with the heat pump. 
uh, this is a pro <laughs> uh, this is this is a project we work a lot on and uh, that we are now building. It's in uh, Milan. It's mined. It's a new area in Milan, and uh, it's uh, of a, a rather larger scale than uh, uh, Medicon Village. And here we also play heat pumps as both heat pumps and cooling machines in every building. And we balance this uh, by using wells and uh, through the air. Here the uh, cooling demands are exceeding the heating demands, but we use the heat pumps for the cooling. So here's uh, only a little uh, date on that uh, site. So here is a project coming back to the Netherlands, trying to close this loop. It's, uh, it's in Utrecht. And uh, it's uh, a little bit smaller than the wine, uh, one in, uh, in Italy, but it's rather similar. And here we're balancing it using EG energy, so we have warm and cold, cold wells. Here, it's uh, also very interesting that um, the interface in several countries is, is different, uh, because department owners, um, the energy company deliver energy all the way to departments. So the one, uh, we do need to have an interface in each and every apartment. So we also have the rises within the buildings. And now uh, there will be a, a bigger scheme presented in UK in next week, I think it will be presented, uh, and where we're actually putting heat pumps in all apartments. And the reason is that the end customer wants to be able to uh, choose their electricity provider. And they, in these schemes, we do provide both heating and cooling for residentials and do domestic hot water, of course. So this is a new way of deploying heat pumps, thinking about heat pumps as a cooling machine. Hmm. <laughs> much more than a cooling machine. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I could go into much more detail, of yeah. course, as, a, as an aggregator and so on, but... Um, I think this is uh, the time we have. This was so fascinating, Helen. Thank you so point. much. Thank you for.